Hey little thing, let me latch candle, cause mama I should na 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 Welcome to That's Good Sports prediction episode. I'm Brandon Perna, and today I'm breaking down the matchup between the dildo throwing, table breaking, stadium fucking Buffalo Bills Mafia and your Denver Broncos. That's good sports. This episode is sponsored by SquadQL. SquadQL is a fantasy management app that helps you manage multiple teams across multiple websites. So if you're in like three leagues on three different sites, Yahoo, ESPN, CBS, SquadQL keeps it all in one place for you. You use the optimize your lineup button, one click, it gets you the best lineup possible, and you don't need to use your brain. If I've learned anything about fantasy football, it's take your fucking brain out of it and just let the app do it for you. SquadQL, it's free, it's free, it's free. There's no fan base on earth that I respect more than the Bills. They definitely get a half point for home field advantage. And I sympathize with their insanity. If you ever wondered what losing four straight Super Bowls would do to a group of human beings, look no further than Buffalo, New York, where max level stupidity is the only way to show how big of a fan you truly are. Bills fans are like the cockroaches of the NFL. Nothing kills them and they only return stronger. Vance Joseph versus Sean McDermott. Sean McDermott uh, is of course related to Dylan McDermott. Uh, they have the same mother, but different fathers, half brothers. Dylan's dad was a strong, handsome man. And Sean's dad, of course, was Deadpool from X-Men Origins. Talk about getting the shit end of the genetic stick. I think McDermott will develop into a pretty good head coach. He was great with the Panthers defense and is doing the same with the Buffalo Bills defense. But right now, BJ has the hot hand. And not just because it's gonna be 86 degrees in Buffalo on Sunday, but because his team was better prepared to fight the Cowboys and is icing the kicker timeout against San Diego, notch Denver a week one victory. Vance, you're getting a .25 advantage. And with a little luck, this is how McDermott will feel at the end of the day. Give it to him, Bill's Mafia. Trevor Simeon and Broncos receivers versus Bills secondary. The one guy, Simeon Toast Crunch, shirts are available at the That's Good Sports store, link below, needs to watch out for is rookie co corner Tredavious White. Well, and of course the pass rushers that probably won't be blocked. White is playing like Bradley Roby did in his rookie season right now. That's uh, in addition to free safety Jordan Poyer, uh, playing uncharacteristically well. The Bills defense has been pretty damn good so far, only allowing 177 pass yards per game and zero passing touchdowns. They have also only played the Jets and Panthers, which unlike a Panther flying a jet is not impressive. I believe Trevor Simeon is the guy who needs to win this game for the Broncos. And he's going to have to do it by opening up the run game by being extremely efficient in the short passing game, which happens to be his strength. The Broncos offense must exercise patience and limit mistakes. A real boring formula this weekend. Baby formula will be more exciting than the Broncos offensive formula, especially hungry babies like this one. <laughs> Simeon can get rid of the ball quickly. The Broncos pass catchers have have to turn short passes into big gains. Again, they did that last week, but it's even more important against the Bills. Mike McCoy is good at designing these types of plays. I'm confident about Simeon and the receivers moving forward, especially in the red zone where Simeon has thrown six touchdowns and zero picks. That's inside the 20. But I think this is, this is a wash right now. No points. Benny Fowler still in concussion protocol. Questionable to play. I would not have him on the field. And the Broncos need some magic in the slot this weekend. And I'm not talking about those magic slots female Buffalo Bill fans open to be gouged in the Bills stadium parking lots and bathrooms. Broncos O-line and running backs versus Buffalo's front seven. Yes, left tackle Garrett Bowles returned to the practice field this week 
for the Broncos. Huge news and he is listed as questionable. This is good news, but don't get too excited. I would not put him on the field this weekend. That leg needs to properly heal. If the Broncos lose this game, it will be because they get dominated here. I was worried about one guy on the Cowboys defensive line, Demarcus Lawrence, and he embarrassed Menelik Watson. I'm worried about several of these big men on the Bills defensive line. The Bills front seven gets a half point advantage here, and that's without uh, Marcel Darius, who's dealing with an ankle injury. Now, many of you think, oh, D Darius isn't playing. This should be a walk in the park. Wrong. The Bills have depth on their line. Plus, Lorenzo Alexander, the linebacker, had 12 and a half sacks last season. And then there are guys like Jerry Hughes, Kyle Williams, Adolphus Washington, Shaq Lawson. That's plenty for Minelik Watson to struggle with. In fact, the two guys Watson has faced in the first two weeks have the highest pass rushing productivity in the NFL. Melvin Ingram, Demarcus Lawrence, are they elite or just beneficiaries of taking advantage of Menelik Watson? I expect Denver to kick out Allen Barber to left tackle, probably rotate him a bit with uh, Donald Stevenson, limited rotation. I'm actually confident Barber will play well, but until Watson starts showing something, any sort of improvement, the pass rush will be a problem. Running the ball could also be an issue for the Broncos. Buffalo is stout, giving up 57.5 yards per game right now. They're second in the league, allowing 234.5 total offensive yards per game. And linebacker uh, Raymond, or Ramon, Ray Raymond? Humber is a tackling machine. I do expect the running game to slow down for the Broncos on the road against Buffalo. But if they do for some reason churn out churn out a hundred yard rusher get excited start to get very excited about the broncos rushing attack this will be the biggest test for cj and jamal this season someone who will never be a threat in the running game is this fucking idiot that leg snapped in half special teams versus special teams i never thought i would say this but i have to give the bills kicker steven hauschka the advantage here the Gooch Master is one for three on field goal attempts this season. Hauschka is only one for two, but I predict both kickers actually make all of their kicks Sunday. Uh, Steven gets the .25 advantage, but I'm doing that in hopes of reversing the curse of the Gooch for BMAC. He's gonna find his stride, trust me. Oh, and the new lyrics for ground control, the nickname for the Broncos defensive line to pair with the no fly zone, they go like this. This is ground control to Major Vaughn. Take your NFL approved protein pills and put your helmets on. Tyrod Taylor and ball catchers versus no fly zone. The Buffalo Bills offense is terrible right now. And I honestly believe it's in big part because of Rick Dennison, their offensive coordinator. They have only made it into the red zone four times. The Broncos have more than double that with nine trips. Bradley Roby, Aqib Tlaib, and Chris Harris all have advantages over the Bills receivers. Zay Jones, Andre Holmes, and Jordan Matthews. Uh, they're gonna get worked. This is the least talented group of receivers I believe the no-fly zone has faced this season. The Broncos have three interceptions thus far, and I think they're, they're gonna get two more this week. Maybe Aqib Tlaib gets another pick six inching close to that Rod Woodson record of 12. Uh, Tyrod Taylor, gonna be under pressure all day, which we know. Uh, he can elude that pressure with those beautiful calves of his. Damn, those are almost as pretty as CSU's new Colorado uniforms. Rams head coach Mike Bobo likes the new uni so much, he said this, these are hot. The kind of hot that makes you use your jersey as a cum rag and then wear it to the game anyway. God, I wish I was 20 again. Bobo, that's that's weird. Even for me, man. <laughs> I don't see Tyrod Taylor carrying this team, trying to tear apart the no-fly zone with passing balls. Like everyone else, I got excited about Tyrod in 2015, but I think he's just an average NFL QB. Maybe tight end Charles Clay has a day, but Denver gets a Full point advantage here. And I say that knowing that Justin Simmons needs to improve in pass defense. Bills Mafia, take it away.
Bills O-line and running backs versus Broncos front seven. If the Broncos continue on their trend of shutting down elite running backs, they can do the opposite of my real prediction and dominate this game. The Bills line has not been good in 2017, except for the world's favorite locker room bully, Richie Incognito who is the second highest rated guard in the NFL right now. Deion Dawkins will face Shaq Barrett uh, at left tackle since Cordy Glenn is out. Bad news for Buffalo as Dawkins' PFF rating is 66.6 and Shaq Barrett hates the fucking devil and he knows how to destroy him. I guarantee you LaShawn McCoy won't give up as early as the thin-skinned Ezekiel Elliott, but he played just as bad as Zeke last week against the Panthers. He had 12 attempts for nine yards and somehow managed a worse 0.8 yards per carry average than Zeke's 0.9. And just like Zeke, he was coming off a 100 plus yard performance in week one. The Broncos front seven gets a half point advantage. Should be a full point because I know defensive coordinator Joe Woods knows how to shut down Rick Dennison's offense. But there's always a possibility that Shady McCoy could have a big day, be a problem. Uh, Adam Gotsis is becoming more dominant each week as a run stopper. Demata Pecco had a hell of a game last week as well. I like the way this unit's shaping up. Wolf is getting healthy. Ah, I'm getting excited. And Shaq Barrett is finally getting national recognition as a pass rusher you shouldn't sleep with. Sleep on, shouldn't sleep on. One last time, Bill's Mafia, give it to us. Uh, so your grand freaking total is 1.75 Broncos and 1.25 Buffalo. The Bills might not be a great football team, but don't underestimate them. They're not bad. They are a gritty bunch who may lose a lot of close games this year. But the reason those games will be close is because that defense is nasty. It's going to be a challenge, and it's going to slow down the Broncos offense, I believe. The Broncos are a better team. They are the best team Buffalo has faced this season. And uh, they should, the Broncos should win even on the road. So give me a 22 to 12 Broncos win and don't ask how I got that number. Safeties, maybe they'll be safeties. That's the prediction. Make sure you download the SeatGeek app with the link in the descri description. SeatGeek, official sponsor of this channel. Use my promo code, that's good, and you're gonna get $20 off your first order. Bills fans, if you're gonna go to the game on Sunday, save $20 with my SeatGeek promo code, that's good. It will allow you to buy an extra bottle of vodka or pay for a small, very small dildo to throw onto the field uh, SeatGeek ranks all their ticket prices, so you know exactly what size dildo you can buy with your extra $20 in savings. Thanks for watching another episode of That's Good Sports Predictions. Subscribe here on YouTube. Share this video on social medias. Your shares on Facebook and Twitter are fucking huge for me. And I'm on Twitter at Brandon Perna if you want to talk football during the games. That's where I do it. Love you. Bye-bye.